the Joe Rogan experience. NCAA, in true cowardly fashion, is changing course, right? They don't want to be responsible. They don't want to be accountable for this. So what they're doing now is a phase-out approach of this policy uh, and leaving it up to each specific sport governing body to make their own rules, right? So now for swimming, they would resort to looking at World Aquatics or FINA, which is the international governing body. For soccer, they'd look at FIFA. For rowing, they'd look at U.S. rowing. Uh, They don't want a blanket policy anymore. And again, they don't want to be responsible or accountable. So they're leaving it up to the governing bodies and what decision have the governing bodies the governing bodies made? Some have taken appropriate steps. Um, I don't know of many sports that have been perfect, but swimming, for example, uh, their policy now is if you've gone through male puberty, you can't compete with women, which they were really the first ones to take that bold first step in prioritizing fairness over inclusion. But the policy insinuates if you have transitioned by the age of 12, then you can compete with the women, which is not satisfactory. Um, even taking puberty blockers before the age of 12, there are still advantages that males possess over females. And even if they didn't, it's the women's category. Yeah. It's not for men. Yeah. So. Um, and then you have other sports uh, that have gone the total opposite way, like soccer, for example, Um that leave it up to, you know, self-identification. Basically, you just compete where you feel best. Oh, how convenient. Isn't it? Um, which, at this national championships, right, this, this national championships where we had Leah Thomas, who is a male, a man, identifying, self-identifying as a woman, we were told we fully had to treat this person as a woman, right? This same national championships, we had another athlete who was transitioning Uh, But this athlete is a female who was then self-identifying as a man from Yale. Uh, Izzy now goes by the name of Isaac. Um, And we were told we fully had to treat this person as a man. Optics purposes here to give you perspective of what this looked like from our eyes. Okay, finals of the 100 freestyle. Top eight women in the entire nation. Air quotes women. Air quotes women. Yeah, for those that don't have video, (laughs) air quotes women. Top eight women in the entire country. And you've got a six foot four man in a women's swimsuit with a bulge next to a woman wearing only a Speedo with nothing covering her top. Your reaction was my reaction. So I'm sitting there watching this. I'm thinking to myself, it's me. I'm the crazy one. It must be. <laughs> this is the freaking Twilight Zone. Um, How does the audience react to this? Like when Leah Thomas gets on the block, when they're about to start a race. How does the audience react to this? Uh, as you can imagine, right? Like there was a lot of silence. Uh, a lot of people didn't really know what to do, uh, what to say. There wasn't a lot of clapping. There was a lot of like protesters and like trans rights activists who were there who were being yeah. loud and the posters and blah, blah, blah. Uh, lots of booing. Uh, Kelly J. Keene was there, who is a phenomenal women's rights activist out of England. And she was there and, and she I'll never forget. I'm standing on the pool deck. And at this point in time, like, of course, me and all my teammates and my coaches, we all knew this was wrong, but it's still I didn't know how to talk about it or what to say or what outlet to go to. And I remember hearing her from the stands um, and she just said something that we were all thinking and she yelled so loud, he's a cheater. And I was like, oh my gosh, I needed to hear that. Um, So there was a lot of booing, uh, as you can imagine, lots of silence. And through this, so you have the loud uh, trans rights protesters and is there anyone countering that? Are there loud pro-women sports protesters? There were. Um, not as loud, if I'm going to be honest, not as ugly, <laughs> which I think that gets a lot of media time uh, when you have these men with beards and these big signs. Uh, that certainly catches a lot of cameras. Um, so they were definitely there. Uh, and looking back, like I said, like, being able to see them, 
uh, it inspired me. It gave me courage um, to be willing to kind of put my name and face to it because I was scared at first um, based on just kind of the silencing tactics that were used to keep us quiet, right? Like we were told, you know, you'll never get a job if you speak out about this. Your your employer is going to look you up and see that you're a transphobe. And you don't want that, do you? You don't want everyone to think that you're transphobic. Was or, this a conversation that someone actually had with you? Yeah. we. I mean, we had to go to training, Joe, to learn how, again. How to accept that you're being cheated. A senior in college. Yeah. 21 years old. Yeah. Um, they brought in an outside professional. Again, air quotes, because what in the world? How can you be an outside professional um, who sat us down and taught us how to use she, her pronouns. <laughs> Again, a senior in college, I'm like, am I really? Taught you how. You, an actual she, her. An actual she, her. How do you use she, her pronouns? We had to go through these interview questions. Uh, they'd throw a question at us if we didn't answer their fake interview question to their standard we had to go through it again oh my god yeah indoctrination thomas's teammates right 16 of these girls plus their parents at the beginning of the season signed on to a letter expressing their discomfort in the locker room um i kid you not the university responded back with and i have a screenshot of their response if you as women feel uncomfortable seeing male genitalia here are some counseling resources that you should seek in an attempt to re-educate yourselves. Re-educate yourself that that's a, a sheenus. A she that's not a penis. That's a sheenus. Oh. Queenus penis. <laughs> so does Leah Thompson have sex with girls? What? Leah Thomas, rather. Yeah. At the time, again, this is what I know based off of what his teammates have told me and, and what really has been public knowledge based off what they post and different things. Uh, at the time of that national championships, he was still dating women and active with women. Sexually. So obviously has testosterone. Yes. But now, um, again, based off of social media, um, he is engaged to another man who claims to be a woman. So two men, but they call themselves lesbians. Um, so who knows? But, but at, yes, but at the time, so yeah. you're a, if you're on that team, you're a woman, and you have a biological male who's intact, who's having sex with women, walking around naked in the locker room with women, and if you're uncomfortable with that, you should educate yourself you and said learn it. how to use she/her pronouns and accept defeat. You said it to this person that's not a woman. You said it, and the whole idea behind Title Nine was supposed to be to protect women's sports. It's supposed to be to have a place where women can compete fairly against women. Yeah. And because of this insane cult that 45% of the country's in or whatever it is, you have to deal with this literal mental patient in a woman's sport dominating and everyone's cheering. Yes. And, and, it, it, and everyone around it that's watching it is upset. All the parents... Probably on both teams. Of course. All the women that are competing with this man. And the whole world's like, yay, diversity. And yeah. you must feel like you're in a fucking movie or something. Well, I'll tell you, um, really what had thrusted me over the edge into no longer being willing to lie, ultimately, is he and I raced in the 200 freestyle. This is the day after he swam the 500 freestyle. And won a national title, uh, beat out Olympians, beat out American record holders, right? Keep in mind, these aren't scrubs. They're the most impressive and accomplished female swimmers this world has ever seen. And again, he beat them all by body links. Um, one second might not sound like a lot of time, but in the sport of swimming, again, measured down to the hundredth of a second, one second is significant. Uh, he beat the entire nation by almost, the entire nation of women by almost two full seconds. Even the time he went last year would have beat every girl in the country this past season by nearly two full seconds, um, making him the first man to win a Division One NCAA women's title trailblazer. Um, but the second day of competition, the day after this, he and I race in the 200 freestyle. Uh, so, look, we get on the blocks, dive off, swim eight laps of freestyle, touch the wall at the end. I look up at the scoreboard. 
And almost impossibly enough, Joe, we had gone the exact same time, meaning, of course, we had tied, uh, which is incredibly, one, it's incredibly embarrassing for a six foot four man to not even be able to beat like a five five uh, <laughs> female. Um, but again, going a, a minute and 40 ish seconds and not even one one hundredth separated us. You can't tell me that's not divine intervention. Um, but tied, we get out of the water, uh, we go, yeah, you can see here, we both went 143.40. Not one of us going 143.39 or 143.41 tying. Uh, get out of the water, go behind the awards podium. The NCAA official looks at both Thomas and myself. Thomas, who is towering over me, right, six foot four, and this official looks at both of us and says, great job, you two. Uh, but you tied. And we only have one trophy, so we're going to give the trophy to Leah. Sorry, Riley, you don't get one. My Jesus Christ. heart rate was still high, having just competed. My adrenaline was still pumping. Um, and so the first thing that I thought ended up being the first thing that I said, and the first thought that I had was just what you had just said, right? Like, isn't this everything that Title IX was passed to prevent from happening? What do you mean you're going to give the trophy to the man in the women's 200 freestyle? Um, I asked the question that no one dared ask all season. And I said, why? Which, of course, uh, he didn't have an answer as to why. They didn't give him a script of what to say when someone asked you the dreaded question of why. And so his first his first excuse he came up with, uh, he He's stumbling on his words, and he's, uh, uh, well, uh, we're actually just doing this in chronological order, he said. And so I said, okay, do you mean alphabetical? Because G comes before T. Otherwise, I literally have no idea what you're being chronological about. Right? We tied. So, again, what's your rationale here? Uh, and finally, he realized that he didn't have a justification. He didn't have an answer for this. And so, and... I actually appreciate his honesty. Uh, this is when his face changed. He looked sad. His voice changed. I could tell he didn't even believe what he was about to say. Um, but this official looked at me and said, Riley, I am so sorry, uh, but we have been advised as an organization that when photos are being taken, it's crucial that the trophy's in Leah's hands. Again, you can pose with this one, uh, but you have to give yours back. Leah takes the trophy home. You go home empty-handed, end of story. We can eventually mail you one, Oh my God. is what they said. So it was kind of, it was like that moment when I, I could, like I felt guilty at that point. I felt guilty for participating in the farce. I felt guilty for even getting in the water at this point. And so it kind of hit me. I, I won't say I was necessarily cowering because it didn't feel like that to me. I wasn't necessarily scared to approach the topic. I just thought someone else would. I thought a coach would say something. I thought some other swimmer. I thought someone with political power, someone within the NCAA. Quite honestly, I thought someone's dad would come down there and yank this man out of our locker rooms. But it was in that moment uh, where we were standing on the podium, myself included. I I'm standing on the podium and we're clapping and we're smiling and we're cheering. And it hit me. I'm like, what in the world are we clapping for? Because, I mean, really what we're applauding is our own erasure, our own demolition. And so uh, it was right then and there that, uh, again, like a slap across the face, I was like, how in the world can we as women, as female athletes, expect someone to stand up for us if we aren't even willing to stand up for us? Like, this has to come from us. Um so again, I knew all season the unfair competition was wrong. I knew all season that the locker room aspect was wrong. I knew that the silencing that we were facing from our universities, I knew all of that was wrong. We all did. But it wasn't until this official reduced everything that we had worked our entire lives for down to a photo op to validate the feelings and the identity of a man at the expense of our own, that's... That's really when I, I decided that I couldn't continue being silent.